This video is going to be all about the fuel tank in the R107 and we're going to have a go at taking out this fuel tank and putting a fuel tank in the project car over there. Now the project car does already have a fuel tank in it but in actual fact it's the wrong type of fuel tank for the car. So what I want to do is take this fuel tank out um, and just check what kind of gaskets and senders fuel send it has in it. Now this car was partially disassembled before we got it um, and to get to this stage where you can actually see the fuel tank here and the header tank here you have to take off this panel here and this panel is just held on with a series of bolts here and here all the way along the bottom here there's lots of them but it's just bolts holding that on you can see where they bolt into here and on this particular car this was so rusty that panel often rusts out in fact um, we bought that from a guy in London um, for this project so the secret to getting this tank out is realizing that this header tank here is actually attached by two screws that you can't see from inside the soft top cover there now it's going to be tricky getting to those screws on our um, parts car because there's a ramp on top of it and we're not going to be able to lift the soft top cover up but I'm just going to show you where the screws are on this car you should just about be able to see two screw holes one is here so just to orientate yourself one is here and the other one's about the same length across there and there's two Phillips screws that you need to undo before you can get that breather tank out you have to get those screws out just with a little screwdriver bit on a seven mil socket um, they came out remarkably easily and they're not rusted, which is amazing for this car. Now this is attached to the fuel tank with multiple hoses. So we're just going to undo some of these hoses and take that out. You can see why we'll be replacing these fuel clamps with stainless steel ones. All you need is for one of those to rust through and that hose to come off to leave you stranded. We got that header tank out. This um, sort of conical breather here is attached through the car and through a seal and also there's a clip underneath. So I'm just gonna leave that hanging there for a second. I'll try and cut this carefully so that we don't get any of the wires. The header tank out, unfortunately, this had a cut in it and when we pulled it through, it just sheared off. So we could either just splice a bit of pipe in there to make it whole again, or you can actually buy this section of pipe here. Just note how it attaches there with that P-clip. But I think from, from the fact that they're actually glued on, so it may be a matter of cutting that off and gluing a new one on. I haven't decided yet. We may just splice and repair that. Once you've got the header tank off, you need to undo these four bolts here. These were already undone on this car. There's two on that side and there's two on that side. Then you need to unplug the fuel sender from the top of the tank and that's done from inside the soft top compartment. There's a round plastic cap that you just ping off, um, just pull straight off, and then you unplug the fuel sender. You're gonna have to take off the fuel cap, and now ours is actually locked on, so I've brought some keys with me that hopefully might fit that. This is the key that I got cut from Mercedes when we wanted to see what was in the um, glove box, and once again, it fits in the lock, but I don't want to force it in case I break it, so we may just have to, we'll see if we can get the tank out without, um, taking that off I don't think you can but we'll have a go underneath the car you're going to have to undo both the fuel strainer and the return line which comes to this side of the tank the spare fuel tank that we've got and I just want to show you that fitting there that is the return fuel line that you're going to need to undo undo for under the car we need to get this fuel strainer out we've cut the hose off we're going to try and spin it out the socket and maybe the whole fuel strainer will come with it that's what often happens and maybe not we'll just have to see almost impossible to get this fuel tank out with that fuel cap still on but I may need to use this fuel tank so I don't want to just cut the neck off so what I've done is I've just cut a section out of the car here if need be we'll take the whole thing out we small I think we're just about got this fuel tank out now let's take it out and have a look at it what the car looks like without the fuel tank in there and in fact that there is one of the missing washers that we'll be needing to secure the fuel tank in the other car and this here is the um 
the special angled grommet that they use for the fuel tank breather. One of the reasons I wanted to take this tank out is I wanted to see what padding gaskets are on it. You can see there are three rubber strips here. One, two, three, that are just stuck on to stop the tank banging on the bottom of the car. There's this big square rubber gasket here. And there's also a, um, a rubber piece of foam here between the fuel return line and the car as well. So we'll be taking these off the car or making new ones and putting them on our fuel tank for the project. This seal is just stuck on here. It's just a piece of neoprene and we'll see if that will clean up. And if not, we'll just get a piece of neoprene foam. It's the kind of same foam I think that's used for the um, floor mats that we made up. If I can cut a nice clean hole in there, we will just stick one of them to the bottom of the fuel tank. And same with these things here. If they clean up nicely, we'll use them again. If not, we'll just make up some more. We could potentially use this section of hose, if not to bend a new section and even cut it out. The other one on our um, early 107 tank is rusted through, but this looks a bit rusty as well. So if we do get that other tank repaired, we could cut this section out and get them to make up an exact piece like that. Um, but let's see if we can get all of this off and see what gaskets would be behind the filler cap. event that locked fuel cap just slips straight through this gasket. But this gasket you can see is knackered. It's what keeps moisture out from the car. So we'll just be getting another one, but it's worth noticing, noting these two grommets here, we can probably use them for the project car. Um, and possibly that sticker as well, if we can get it off. Um, although that might be for a 450 car it might be the same for 280 i'm not sure i'll just have to check just gonna cut the top of this tank here off with an angle grinder and see if we can salvage this lock see if it's just that the fact that the lock is gummed up we might be able to use this on the project car there we go that's what the back of that lock looks like we just need to take that circle circuit, circuit pliers that fit in those two holes but in the absence of that you can wedge one screwdriver in that way and another screwdriver in that way to that stage there and that clip should just ping off that circuit off this will all spring up just remember which way it comes apart the locking ring out that should in theory just tap out of there and truly really stuck in there well, what do you know we eventually got this lock working fortunately i broke my camera stand today but and um, we eventually got this lock working with the master key that we got cut from mercedes so that fuel cap lock does actually work anyone who's interested the part number of that fuel cap lock is treble zero four seven one four nine three zero and the ring or the gasket that's in here is this thing here. And this is part number 110-4710280. I'm gonna finish this video here. This is just a shot of the back of our project car. In the next video, I am hoping to have buttoned down this fuel tank here. We'll have glued on all the gaskets, taken the relevant brass brackets here, bolted that in, put the gaskets on the filler cap here, connected up the header tank and all cut all the relative fuel hoses and replaced them all with stainless steel fuel clamps. We've done the fuel pump assembly. I'm still waiting for a fuel pulsation dampener from Germany. That should arrive any day now. So in the next video, I think we'll just be putting all of this back end back together, putting the back panel on, maybe even gluing the carpet on and then moving on hopefully to something like the starter motor. As I mentioned in the previous video, this is a later style fuel tank, um, which I think for the time being, because I've got the fuel sender for this, um, I'm gonna keep this in the car because the tank that came out of this car um, has got some rust damage here. And what I may do at a later stage is send this off to a sandblaster, get the inside of the tank cleaned out, get this bit of pipe re-welded and repaired and get a quote to see how much that costs. I'm sure it'll be substantially less than a new tank. And then we may yet put the original tank back in with the original fuel sender. The SL shop have pretty much everything you need if you wanted to refurbish and renew your fuel tank. This here, the 107470 is what's in the red project car at the moment. What we actually need is this fuel tank here. I don't think we're gonna spend 600 pounds to get a new one. 
uh, but all the rubber gaskets, etc., they also stock. It is also worth phoning up Mercedes because many, many, many of these parts are actually cheaper from Mercedes. And I don't mean to do the SL shop down in any way, shape or form, but often they simply buy these parts from Mercedes and add a small margin. So definitely phone your local Mercedes parts place um, and get a price from them as well.